for His glory. Let there be glory and honor and praise. Hallelujah. Glory and honor to Jesus. Glory and honor. Glory and honor to Him. One of the many things I love about that chorus is that I, we, me, us are not, is not in that song. It's all about Him, all glory and honor and praises to Jesus. so I could praise Him more abundantly and more gloriously give Him all the glory and honor and praise. Let's sing because He lives together. Start off on the chorus and sing it to him. tomorrow. They don't know who they're going to face tomorrow. They don't know the obstacles they're going to face tomorrow and this week and next Sunday when they talk to the people and see the people there. But I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds their hand and his name is Jesus and anything that people have to face, we can face it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Life is worth a just because he lives and then one day and then one day I'm gonna cross that river hallelujah I'll fight life's fight no war with pain and then as death
Praise God. Can't you just praise him? Hallelujah. We want Amanda to come around now and just minister. Just minister to the Lord in song. You worship the Lord with her as she sings. And just let God minister to you and worship and lift up the name Jesus. God bless you. Obey the Lord.
a blessing. For I am in your midst to grant your every need. You have not because you ask not. Ask and believe me and receive what you have need of. For I am God. I am the creator of all things. And there's nothing too hard for me. Nothing too difficult for me. Believe and accept from my power, my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. My God, worship him, worship him, worship him, worship him, worship him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God. We're excited about having Brother Carlo preach tonight. And just let God have his way and preach through you, brother. Preach like a man from another world. Come on up here and let God use you. Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Be praying much for him. He's under a heavy load preaching tonight. And we're believing God for a great, great move of his power and the Holy Ghost. God bless you. I was thinking back when, when you were singing a while ago, Amanda, and I, whenever the song got to the part where he said, you touched me, when no one else would. And I thought back to the day yeah. when I walked through the doors of Safe Harbor Church of God on 77 for the first time with my family. But not only did God touch me that night, Pastor Knight, would you stand up for a minute? But Pastor Knight, <laughs> he reached out and he touched me. He gave me a hug. And man, how my life has changed since then. God went into that church a broken man at 42 years of age. Didn't know nothing about what I needed to know about. But through time, God is, in, and I'm 48 now. But as times went by, God has revealed some things to me about my life that needed to be taken care of. And he showed me how to walk in a better path and a better place. And he gave me insight to his world and what it would be like if I would just be obedient to him and follow his plan for my life. I had a plan for myself. But I didn't, I didn't understand how he could make a plan for me that would be better than what I could come up in my mind. Me and brother uh, Michael here was just talking a while ago how we like going to the beach and we like sitting on the beach early in the morning and watching the waves and just thinking about the greatness of God and how he created the oceans and the seas, everything in it. He created you and me and how, the, how magnificent his imagination was, that he didn't just plan those things that we could see with our eyes, but he also planned those things that we cannot see, like the, like the molecules, the DNA that's inside of our bodies. He created all that, but we, when we try to imagine what our life would be like in our minds and we try, try to create something, there's nothing we can think of, nothing that we can think of that is better than what God will do if we will be his servant, his hand, his hands and his feet and his mouth. You know, I don't, I don't understand how I'm here. I really don't. I don't understand. I do, I do believe, you know, I am truly grateful for what God's doing in mine and my wife's life. We're about to do something that yes. is uh, scary for both of us. Yes. And, it, and I believe it will be wonderful, Pastor Knight. I truly I have peace about it. Yes. But the, I'm going to go into what I feel like the Lord is wanting us to hear tonight. 
And I am grateful for the opportunity to be here. So if you will, would you please stand with me? And I want you to pray for me as I pray for you as well. I want you to pray that God would use me the way he wants me to be used tonight. And that my fleshly body, this thing that you see before you is gone, is vanished. And you see Jesus walking across this, po- this stage. And you feel and hear the words penetrate your heart as he moves through you and blows upon you what you need to hear tonight. So, Father, we thank you as you take this broken vessel and you use this vessel for your glory and your honor. You know what's inside of this man. You know what he needs. He is nothing without you. He is an empty glove without a hand. So I pray, Father, that you would fill this glove, that you would fill this vessel, and that you would flow through this vessel, Father, touching these individuals here in this church tonight with your words, not the words of man, but the words of God, the words of the Holy Spirit as you minister life, deliverance, help, and strength into their lives. So we just thank you, Father, as you flow through us and touch our hearts. Help them receive what it is they need to receive this night. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In the Word of God, it tells us that that Moses went to the top of a mountain on the backside of the wilderness. But it wasn't just any mountain. It was a mountain of God, a place where God dwelled. And as Moses come up to this mountain, he heard God speak to him. And now Exodus chapter 3, verses 2 through 5 say this. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the out of the midst of the bush of a bush. And he looked up, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight, why the, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, he said, here am I. And he said, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. These verses remind me of the first day I came in to Safe Harbor Church of God with my family, Angela and the kids there. We didn't know it at the time. But after that play, or during that play, that Christmas play, And after that play, the Spirit of God moved upon that church. And He started to burn in that place. And I was in the presence of a holy God. And allowing God to just flow around me and about me and under me and over me. And not knowing what it was that was penetrating my life in that moment, in that time. In the blessings of God, I was standing. But I was scared. I had complete fear in my life. Because what I was seeing was something I hadn't seen before. I saw the power of God fall upon Carrie. Praise God. And she appeared as a flame of fire. And there was others in the church as well. As the Spirit of God blew across the top of that church in the ministry, in the pews. And as I watched God burn within her, I I saw something inside of me And I was desiring what I was seeing. Even though I was scared to death, holding on to the back of that pew with everything I had, wanting to crawl under, I could not because I was frozen in place. I was seeing something that was magnified by God. It was Him in the presence of me and the rest of the church. And as I watched, as I watched the Holy Spirit burn in this place and not consume, but just use them as an opportunity to minister. And as I think about God, as he called out to Moses, and he says, Moses, Moses, take off thy shoes, for thou art standing on holy ground. In that moment, in that hour, in that second, I felt like God was calling out to me saying, Carlo, Carlo, take off thy shoes. You are dwelling in the house of the Lord. You are in my place. And I want you to step your feet onto holy ground. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And in that moment, 
I had a choice to make. Do I run? Do I hide? Do I believe the lies of Satan as he's crying in my ears saying, you're in a place that's crazy. You hadn't seen anything like this before. You've heard the stories about the Pentecostal faith. Or do I listen to God? And God says, Carlo, dwell with me. Rest with me. Become one with me. Let me flow through you and change your life and make it something that you can be proud of. Because it's not you. It's not you. Hallelujah. It's not you. It's me flowing through you. So I stand here before you today. Not because I ran that day. But because I took off my shoes. And I decided to dig my toes deep down into that soil. And see what it was that God wanted to do in my life. I know this message may seem to you like it's a message about Carlo. But it's not. God's no respecter of a person. What you're hearing today is the same thing that God wants to do with each and every one of us. He calls us into this church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. And he says, would you please hear my voice? Thou art standing in the presence of a holy God. Kick off thy shoes and become one with me. Sink your toes into the holy, rich soil for which you are standing on. And let me flow through that soil into your toes and from your toes to your ankles and from your ankles to your knees and from your knees to your head and just saturate you with the Holy Spirit as I burn like a bush that's on fire. But I will not consume you. I will use you and I will bless you abundantly. Hallelujah. To the point you won't even recognize your own life. No. That day When I walked into Safe Church, Safe Harbor Church of God, any church wouldn't have done that night. It took it takes fertile soil. It takes anointed soil. It takes holy soil. You can't get that in just any church. There's a lot of good churches out there, and there's a lot of bad churches out there. There's a lot of churches with God dwelling in them. But there's a lot of churches out there that are synagogues of Satan. They're filling their their lives with their pleasure, fleshly pleasures, and their own desires. But if you get the opportunity to walk into a place, you may not understand why things happen the way they do. But if you walk in, get the opportunity to walk into a holy place. And you are start to hear God's voice saying, I know it's, dang, it's strange. I know it looks dangerous. But just take a moment, kick your shoes off, and dwell, and see what I will do in your life. Jesus told us about different types of soil. I don't even know why I got this to tell you truth other than the scriptures on here. I'm not even, I don't know nothing of this. Praise God. Who? Okay. Let's pray for Jerry, y'all. Jerry Jeffers. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we come to you, Father. We, we speak you life into Jerry. Father, we just pray that you God, we defy and defeat the, the powers God. of darkness that are attacking God. him and his body, we know this. his lungs, his heart, we, his breathing. We speak in your hands. to Jerry to live and not die. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Jerry Jeffers, live Thank you, Father. and not die. In the name of Jesus, yes, Father, the we speak to the spirit of life to flow into Jerry right Jesus now. Continue. Thank you, Father. That he's being that he's right made whole for your glory, now. glory, to give you more glory, right to give now. the devil another black eye. Oh, body. God, I Father, praise you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for raising him up. Right now. Thank you for raising him up. Praise and glory thank you, Lord, for filling those with him with faith from Jerry, to Father. know that you're taking care of him. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Father. God bless you. Obey God. Jesus. He told us in the scriptures about the different types of soil 
that we could be exposed to. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 13, verses 9, or 3 through 9, and it says this. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. And the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up. And because they had no deepness of earth, and when the sun was up, they were scorched, because they had no root. They withered away. And some fell among thorns. And the thorn sprung up and choked them out. Many of us here tonight in this place have thorns in our life. We have things that have come up around us. Things that have tried to crowd us and choke the very life of God out of us. And some of these thorns are even growing taller than we can handle. And they're starting to overshadow us and cast and, shadow, and overshadow us and keep the light of the glory of God from getting to us. But I'm going to tell you this. Dig a little deeper. Get deeper than what the root, than what the uh, thorns roots are. Get to where that rich, moist water, that living water is, and that soil is that God has provided for you. Yeah. These, these thorns are temporary. They're temporary. They 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 look vicious and they feel vicious and they th and you feel like they're going to just take you and destroy you. But you have something that the thorns do not have. You don't have the appearance of evil like the thorns do. You have have a mighty God who is standing with you and he was under your feet and is feeding you from the ground up with everything you need. Yeah. So turn to God when those thorns start to come against you. Understand where the true source of your power comes from. It comes from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Verses 8 and 9 say this. But others fell into good ground. And brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath an ear to hear, let him hear. Yes. The first day when my family and I came into Safe Harbor Church of God, God came upon me with love, yes. Yes. mercy, yes. Yes. grace, God. and favor. Hallelujah. God has come upon each and every one of you here in this church at one point or another with those same things. Those storms, those thorns, they remind me of storms in our lives. The word of God that I felt like the title that God had given me is this. Deeply rooted and digging deeper. And as I was, as when Pastor Knight gave me the opportunity to speak tonight, I did not have a word for this church at that moment. And to be honest, I had no idea what I was going to preach. But an hour later, I was driving down the road. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And as I was driving to town, the Holy Spirit revealed this message to me tonight. And I started getting filled with the Holy Spirit as I was driving. And Angel saying, do you want me to drive? Do you need to pull over and let me drive? I said, no, I think I'm okay. And I continued on speaking in tongues as I was driving. <laughs> we went and spent about five hours in Gaston after I received what I believe was the word for tonight. I didn't receive it in the fullness. I'm receiving it now as, I, as we speak now. But, but he gave me what I thought I needed to preach on. But I knew First of all, the Holy Spirit told, confirmed it in my spirit. But I knew by a second, and that second was April, when she had talked about a tree in her yard and how storms, the storms of life had come through and destroyed the tree and split it, and there was nothing left but a stump in the ground. And as time went by, that fertile soil that that tree was growing in had grown another tree out of the stump. And that's the way our lives feel at times. We feel like we're trapped in a major storm. And that storm is raging all around us. And it's kicking up all kinds of debris. And it's slinging things over and breaking things. I remember when I lived in Florida. Hallelujah. We have in Florida, in this one place where I lived in central Florida, they had these magnificent oak trees. 
beautiful oak trees, 150 to 200 year old oak trees, massive trees. One tree that was at my uncle's house, he had many of them on his property, but one tree he had, it had a massive limb about that big around, huge. It was so big that the limb, because of the weight of the limb, went down to the ground, rested on the ground, and then went right back up and started growing again. Massive tree, massive. Well, we had a, 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 a hurricane come into that area. And the winds from that hurricane just started to blow and rage. And it was scary. It was very scary. But I remember looking outside my door of our house. We didn't have nothing but giant tall pine trees in our yard. Giant lightning rods is what I called them. Because the lightning strike them just about every storm. It was going to, lightning was going to strike one of them trees. But they were whipping back and forth, back and forth. And it just looked like at any moment they would break in half. But they didn't. After the storm was gone, my uncle called my dad. He says, I need some help. And dad said, okay. So we went over to his house. That big, massive oak tree fell over. And it was from the roots and everything just fell over. Do you know why it fell? Because that oak tree's roots went across the top of the ground. Yeah. It didn't go down deep into the ground. So when the storm came and it blew and it raged because that tree didn't have good roots going down, it blew over. But those pine trees back in my yard, the roots of that tree, they go deep. They go way deep down inside. So it takes a bigger storm to blow them over. Matter of fact, that same storm, that same hurricane came through and spawned a tornado in that our area. And it went through a mile and a half, it was about a mile and a half long, but a half or a quarter of a mile wide path of destruction. And it went through a pine tree orchard where they grow pine trees, a farm, a pine tree farm. And you know what happened? It did cause some damage. But the trees were broke off halfway. And the roots and the stalk of the tree was still standing. The tops of the trees were leveled off. But the tree itself continued to live even without the tops. And it reminds me of that tree in your yard. Yes. And we can be just like that tree. Yes. We, if we plant ourselves in that fertile, holy ground. Yes. And when we are sitting on the mountaintop. Let, you, let me tell you this. When you're standing on the mountaintop and life is good. I want you to remember this if you don't remember anything. Start digging deep because the ground is even softer than what you've ever experienced in your life. Because it won't be long before the storm comes and you're going to need the depth of the root that you're standing on to get you through that storm. So dig deep on the mountaintops because it's good, easy digging. And that's when God is blessing you and you're getting the opportunity to see the flow and the love of God. Tonight, God has sent me into this house yes. not to talk about Carla, but to talk about you. To talk about the storms that are going on in your life. To tell you He is ready. He's ready for you to come. And He's ready to t address those storms in your life. You may have problems at your jobs. You may have problems with people in your life who are not treating you like you should be treated. And God's saying it's time. It's time for you to give it up to me and let me heal you and enrich your life. Yeah. Let me feed you in your time of need. That way when you are standing in the presence of a disastrous storm, you will thrive like a tree that is planted by the water who will not know the drought is even going on. He will feed you. He will nurture you. Yeah. He will pour into you. And you will be able to walk through the storm and not have any pains and sufferings in your physical body. Amen. So God is asking you, are you tired of the storm? Whatever that storm may be, it could be anything. It could be loneliness of heart. Why am I still lonely, God? Why am I not married? Why? Whatever it may be. Why am I struggling in school, God? Why am I struggling in my job, God? What have I done? God's saying, man, you had not done anything. 
That's just a storm of life taking place. It's an opportunity for you to come to an altar of God and dig your feet into that holy ground that He has provided for you. Yes, sir. Safe Harbor is just a beginning of what God has for each and every one of us. Yes, sir. Safe Harbor is that outer layer of soil that God has for us. But the deeper we get... The deeper we get into what God has in plan, has planned for us, in store for us. And he has, what he has in store for us is him. His body. His life that he wants for us. So tonight, if you have a need, any kind of need whatsoever. If I didn't name it, that's fine. God knows what it is. He's giving you an opportunity. He's giving you a time and a place. He's trying to speak to you himself saying, now's the time. Now's the time to come and sit, rest in that soil yes. that he has provided for you. Yes. So, let's... Would everyone please stand? Father, as we're standing in your house tonight, as we hear what sounds as a storm outside the building blowing and raging, I thank you for that special effects that's taking place. You're using the heavens and the earth right now to put your word before your people. Thank you. That they may be able to believe and receive yes. what you have spoken into my ears for them to hear. So as they are standing in front of your altar, pondering through their thought process and their minds and their hearts. And as they contemplate whether they want to give up the troubles that they have, those storms that they have in their life. And let you handle them instead of them handle them, Father. We thank you that you're going to touch them that you're going to guide them and you're going to let them hear your voice in this moment and let them know that they can turn to you and receive of you. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's inviting you right now. Right now. You don't have to tell anybody what your storm is, but he's telling you right now, come to me and tell me. And the only reason you're telling me, I know what's going on in your life. I know what's in your heart. I know the truth. I know your heart. But I want you to submit and give it freely to me. Give it freely to me. I know you've went through many disappointments. I know you've seen me come and go in other people's lives. And I know you're wanting me to do something in your life. Come now. Don't wait. Come now and receive. Ask me that question. you have in your heart. Ask me and I'll answer. Come. Come to the altar. Come and allow God to move upon you. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait any longer. God has opened the heavens up for you tonight. He's moved the earth in a different way. Come and let him minister to you.